Alrighty, here we're looking at question four from the 2016 exam. It says phenol is a weak acid that partially dissociates in water according to the equation above. So this must be the phenol, water, and then I've got the conjugate base and the hydronium showing that it's an acid. I've got a Ka value, 10 to the negative 10, so indeed a weak acid. So what is the pH of a 0.75 molar phenol solution? So hopefully you remember, because it's something we did a lot, our Ka is equal to x squared over the concentration of the acid. And of course x it represents hydronium. And so now of course that you recognize that, I just plug and chug. I've got my Ka, I've got my concentration of my acid, I just gotta solve for x, which is hydronium, and then of course pH is the negative log of that. And I get an answer of 5.04, which does make sense because it is a weak acid. Pretty weak, because a lot of our weak acids were in the pHs of 2 and 3 or whatnot, but so a pretty weak acid here. Now here's the second part to this question. For a certain reaction involving phenol to proceed at a significant rate, the phenol must be prim primarily in its deprotonated form. So it needs to be in the conjugate base form. It needs to be, it has to lose its hydrogen. In order to ensure that the phenol is deprotonated, the reaction must be conducted in a buffered solution. On the number scale below, circle each pH for which more than 50% of the phenol molecules are in the deprotonated form. Justify our answer. So we're, we need to pick, they gave us a scale from 1 to 14. Okay, so we got to think about this. This is a weak acid and a buffer. So that's the long part of that titration curve. And we did the buffer lab and we did titrations. And remember we had a half equivalence point. And so when we have a weak acid, the most prominent molecule in a sample of our weak acid is the weak acid itself because it barely dissociates. And of course, we remember we represent our weak acid as HA. All right. And so in a sample of a weak acid, we have mostly HA. So what we want is A minus because we want the, the hydrogen to be gone, deprotonated. So if you remember, be the beginning of a titration or whatever with our buffer, it's mostly HA. When we reach the half equivalence point, HA and A minus equal each other. Beyond the half equivalence point, there's more of the A minus. So we need to know the pH beyond the half equivalence point. Hopefully something's ding ding dinging because pH equals pKa at the half equivalence point. All right, so for weak acids, HA equals A minus when pH equals pKa. HA is greater than A minus when pH is less, so like at the beginning of the titration, up until the half equivalence point. Past the half equivalence point, when pH is greater than pKa, that's when the deprotonated form takes over. And so the pKa, oh sorry, du, 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 du. pKa is negative log of my Ka, so that comes out to be 9.95. So for pHs 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, I would have more of the A minus than I would the HA. I would have more of the deprotonated phenol than the phenol itself. Tricky, yes. Hopefully you, you would definitely get the pH because that's x squared over the concentration of the acid. But then, you know, pH equals pKa and that's when we have equal concentrations of my weak acid and its deprotonated form, the conjugate base. All right. Up until that point, there's always more of my weak acid. After that point, after the half equivalence point, I would have more of my conjugate base. Alright, I hope that helps, 
and I will see you soon.